be with you. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace uh, be with you. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Now, I, 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 I shortened. I said Dr. B, actually Dr. Bashir. <laughs> yeah. So forget about Dr. Phil, Dr. Roof. You're an expert in this area, author of over 12 books, right. 35 years experience. Alhamdulillah. Tell us, what made you decide to write this wonderful book, book called Blissful Marriage? Our focus, myself and, the, and my wife, since we came to North America back in 1973, was on family and on parenting particularly. But with the workshops we did on parenting, with the counseling we did for parents, we found that one of the main problem that they are not able to help their children is that they themselves have problem among themselves as, as a couple. So we thought of writing a book from this perspective to help them uh, provide the proper family atmosphere at home because mom and dad are, are, are the ones who are responsible for providing a family atmosphere. And if the family atmosphere is negative and unhealthy, uh, the kids, they are being affected negative. If the family atmosphere is healthy and positive, uh, is, is, is uh, reflecting in their uh, upbringing uh, in, in a very, very nice way. And as a matter of fact, the scholars agree that family atmosphere is one of the most important factors that affect the formation of the personality of the child. And who is responsible for the family atmosphere? Both mom and dad. So if they themselves have problems, you can <laughs> right away know what's going to happen within them. And, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with our minds registering pictures much more than words. That's why family atmosphere is very important. That's why Modeling is the most important way of tarbiyah, of parenting. Yes. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as our role model, as he told us in Surah Al-Hazab, verse number 21, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَلَيَوْمَ الْأَخْرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And we as parents have to learn from the model of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then model for our children. Because everything we do at home, leaves a mark on the personality of the child. That's why we thought of writing this book from this perspective, to help both parents to have a blissful marriage, inshallah, have a nice, harmonious relationship that will reflect positively on the uh, children in the house. Now, before we get into a lot of this, is an interesting thing about your book. You have common phrases that are out there. So I didn't just invent this. It's in your book. My wife talks too much, or my, the wife complains about the husband rarely being home. These are real issues that people are dealing with. And another real issue is very important. You discuss this in your book, are the statistic, the statistics of the divorce and other things. Can you go ahead and elaborate why you put these, this in there and yeah, these, a little bit about this? Sure, these are very alarming statistics and it is really scary. Uh, the, the rate of divorce, according to an empirical study that was done by Professor Elias Bayounis, may Allah bless his soul, late Dr. Elias Bayounis, the professor of sociology in, in Upper State, New York. He did an empirical study on rate of divorce with, among Muslim families in various provinces and states in, in, in North America. And that was, uh, he concluded the study in 2002. And the rate of divorce, the mean rate of divorce was around 32%. The national rate then was 50%. Now, according to new studies, it is really alarming. The recent uh, figure that I, I heard was 40% among Muslim families. I estimate more than 40%. And this is for, for, for many reasons. Uh, I'm sure uh, this, this uh, uh, not understanding, for example, the objective of marriage, not preparing themselves for this uh, very important step in their life, uh, not knowing uh, or trying to understand each other and, and uh, not uh, trying to, uh, to know the, uh, what is the process of selection, the proper one that is really going to create a good uh, uh, relationship, not nurturing the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave to us uh, during marriage because it, it was said in, in, in verse number 21, Surah al Rum. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً 
So this mawadda and rahmah is gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is one of his signs that he creates for us spouses so we can dwell in peace and tranquility with them. And he gave us this mawadda and rahmah as his gift during the, uh, the, the, the night of wedding, you know. But after two, three months after wedding, after the honeymoon is over, problems start happening. Why? Because we don't nurture the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. We don't understand uh, the, the proper objectives of marriage. We don't understand many concepts that help keeping the family intact and, and, and peaceful and, and happy and harmonious. So this is, these statistics are, are really alarming. And if we don't really uh, do the right thing to ensure and protect this a uh, very important institution, which is a family, we will be part of these statistics. And uh, our role as uh, scholars is to make sure, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, that we let more and more people know the proper process of selection, know what are the objectives of marriage, where they focus, uh, what should they be doing to nurture the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muadda and Rahma. All these things help tremendously in keeping the family intact so it wouldn't be part of this alarming statistics. We got one more minute before we go to break. Sure. So usually we hear the statistic, that's just a general statistic, the 50 plus percent of the non-Muslims. Right. But now you're telling us this is a statistic that we're catching up to that. Exactly. This is very alarming. It is very alarming. And you have solutions. Now when we come back, you tried and proven solutions for a successful marriage you cover in your book. Yeah, we, we give many practical tips and many principles that we should build the family on to help, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, reducing this uh, number. Of so that's the, what we're going to be talking about and more here with Dr. Bashir, Dr. B, Sheikh, <laughs> on the Dean Show. We'll be right back. Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Bashir, and we're talking about marriage, institution of marriage, because you got broken homes, you will have broken societies, correct? Exactly. So we want to keep the family together, and you've got tried and proven recipes for a successful marriage. That's why you wrote the book, Blissful Marriage, but now you got bombshell marriages, <laughs> you know, the husband and wife terrorizing each other, and we know there's ups and downs in marriage, but how can they keep it together and get through all the tough times and hard times with some of these proven techniques? Yeah, it is amazing how much time couples spend to prepare for the wedding and the dress and the invitation uh, cards and, and, but they don't spend enough time to know each other. So this is the key, is the compatibility between the couple. How much time do they spend with each other to make sure that at least there is a chance of success, 60%, 70% for this marriage to continue? And that's why one of uh, our solutions there is we created a questionnaire for both female candidate and male candidate. It's a long one, it is almost uh, 14, 15 pages. And uh, it, it took lots of thinking to put it together. But if you use this questionnaire as uh, the first step to get to know each other, uh, uh, there are questions about the hobbies, about the, how you, you spend your time, uh, your commitment to the dean, things like this. Uh, if you use this questionnaire, it gives you a very, very good indication that hopefully, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, this marriage will be successful. So these are, yeah. this is before you before actually marry. So this is before marriage. This is before the questionnaire marriage. I see in yeah. your book, yes. Pre, premarital counseling. Yeah. We, uh, as a matter of fact, we recommend to all the imams in various masajid, whoever invites us for the marriage workshop that we do, we recommend to them that never make a, a contract of marriage for anybody without giving them a course on marriage. And there are so many courses available, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and it makes a big difference to understand who, what are you approaching? Who, who, what, what is required in this marriage? Yeah. So this is the first thing. The second thing is there are many uh, concepts that are being misunderstood in Islam by Muslims as well as by non-Muslims. And uh, so many of them is related to the family, is related to the status of woman in Islam, is related to the objective of marriage. So we try to explain in our book in great details in practical terms, what are the objectives of marriage? And scholars, we have list of objectives, but the most important thing that we feel 
is that it help you to be a better Muslim. It help you to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It help you to have a stronger faith. And we give lots of examples from the life of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi as how they helped each other to be stronger Muslims. So if we understand the objectives of marriage as per the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and the seerah of, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa uh, uh, inshallah Rabbil I mean this is going to help us to be in, in a mindset that we are there to contribute to, to the success of this marriage. We will do these things that will show the commitment that we want this marriage to, to be successful. So in the beginning, we, 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 uh, we at least uh, uh, know that there is a, a good chance that's going to be successful through the questionnaire and through the preparation for marriage. Then when we understand the objective of marriage properly, then inshallah rabbil alameen, we are going to commit ourselves to the success of this marriage. Then, if we understand the, the proper uh, concepts of a husband-wife relationship, status of woman Islam, a concept of qawama, this is going to help tremendously in uh, making sure that we are not doing things out of our own culture that has nothing to do with Islam that's contributing negatively to the marriage. Yeah. It, how, how important is it that both parties have to be open and receptive for changing maybe and getting rid of some old bad habits for maybe some cultural, or maybe someone says, look, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. What do you say when someone says you can't teach a old dog new tricks? Or, I know, and I, they, you refer that to a, a person who's set in their ways. Yeah, I, I say this is wrong. You can, anything could be teachable. Uh -huh. And as a matter of fact, the message of Islam itself is a change for the better. We try to change our, ourselves to be better. That's why in, in all our workshops, in all our books, we include a chapter on self-cleansing and self-search for better parenting or for better spousal relation, where we put lots of questions that would help the husband as well as the wife to look at these questions and if they answer them properly and honestly, they will be able to pinpoint and identify the sources of their shortcomings when it comes to this relationship. This is the concept of muhasaba that we are told that we have to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in verse number 18 in Surah uh, Al-Hashr, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat lagad wa attaqu Allah wa you believe. Have taqwa towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let everyone look for what he or she presented for tomorrow. The concept of muhasaba. Umar al-Khattab used to say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu wa zinu a'malakum qabla an tuzan alaykum wa tahiyyahu al-ard al-akbar. Evaluate, assist, scrutinize your own actions and deeds before it's going to be evaluated against you and prepare yourself for that day. So, it is very important that we make self-search so we can improve ourselves in every area of our life, in the area of marriage, in the area of parenting. And that's why we include in our books this self-search questionnaire that will help every spouse to find out what are the sources of my shortcomings, how can I improve them, how can I change them, where are my strengths, and how can I continue to use them. And as you rightly said, communication is a very important key factor in having successful marriage. And there are different styles of communications, and uh, many of the problems that happen is because uh, many spouses use the combative <laughs> style of communication, not the collaborative style of communication. And we elaborate on this and, and say how to be an active listener, how to be to use the I message so you don't offend your uh, partner, your spouse, and this way uh, the chances for things to be successful are much, much higher, inshallah. We got more to talk about. You talk about conflict resolution, forgive and forget, controlling your uh, anger, no name calling, yes. not combative uh, yes, yes. confrontation, all this and more, so we can develop ourselves. This is what our Creator wants to be the best human beings possible. Inshallah. Right back with more, inshallah, God willing. And I know you're all tuned in on all the, my wife talks too much, my husband's <laughs> never home, this chapter of the book. 
and more when we come back here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about blissful marriage with Dr. Bashir. Sheikh, can you tell us in one of the chapters of your book, you have it called Purity and Cleansing, and you talk about forgive and forget. You talk about the conflict, basically, resolution. Can you go over some of these points, controlling your anger? Uh, before we went to break, you talked about the combative mm -hmm. energy between the two is a negative thing. Can you express right. on these? Uh, process of purification and cleansing is very important for us Muslims in every area of our life. And we are recommended to do it with respect to our relation with our spouses, with our uh, children, with our neighbors, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, to put the right perspective on problems is, is very important in avoiding the problem. Problems are part of life. And they will happen no matter what you do. But uh, think about it that it's part of life. And if I deal with it properly, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, there will be no uh, negative lingering effect in the future. It, it even happened in the life of the Prophet, sallallahu He had some problems with his uh, uh, family members with his, with his wives. How do we know this? Aisha radiallahu reported that the Prophet told her, Wallahi, inni a'rifu ghadabik min ridaki. By Allah, I know when you are pleased with me and when you are displeased with me. She said, wa kaifa ya Rasulullah, how? He said, in kunti anni ghadba, qulti la wa rabbi Ibrahim. If you were displeased with me, when you make an oath, you say no with the Lord of Ibrahim. And kunti anni radiya, if you are pleased with me, when you make an oath, you say no with the Lord of Muhammad. She said, you sadaqta Rasulullah, you said the truth. I only abandon your name. So, so see, even in the best relationship between the Prophet and Aisha, she, they had some problems. But the point is how to resolve it properly. And these are some of the guidelines that we talk about in the book uh, that first have the proper perspective of, of the problem. Second, don't, don't be uh, historical and keep uh, pointing fingers and, and remind your spouse with the, all the problems uh, that happen. You remember such and such, you did this, such. No, be solution oriented, uh, be objective and, and, and be calm and cool. Don't discuss it when you are very angry, that's why Anger management is very important in any relationship. Don't act out of anger and or frustration in, in, in when you want to discuss these things. Select a proper time for both of you and sit and discuss. And then use the proper language. There is a rule of communication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us Muslims. And this rule you can find in, in Surah Al-Isra or Surah Bani Israel, verse number 53 which is, is recommending that we always say the kind word. We always say what's best. And tell my servants to always say what's best, to always say the kind uh, uh, word, uh, because shaitan is always trying to uh, solve problems between the, the couple. Yeah, yes. As a matter of fact, the big shaitan is very pleased with the little shaitan who makes, who causes problems within the family much more than anything else. So using the proper communication techniques where you don't point fingers, you don't, you, you use the I message instead of say, you always do this. You made me do this. Say, express your feeling. I don't feel comfortable when I see that our family time is being neglected by you. You are expressing your feeling. You are not pointing finger to the, the other person. He will, he will accept it much more later on. Oh, you always don't respect our family time. You always do this, you always do that. This, this, is, this is not. That's so, a no. That's a no. It's, it's not hap sh shouldn't happen, you know. Uh, that, uh, otherwise, how can we translate it Reveal and, and, and always use what's best. So these are some of the guidelines uh, that uh, Islam tells us about it uh, that would help tremendously in, in keeping the conflicts within the proper perspective. Uh, if, if it's getting bigger, then we can seek counseling. Nothing wrong with seeking counseling. 
it is like a taboo in, in, within Muslim families. But Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recommending it in Quran. Let's send a, 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 a hakam from her side, a hakam from her side, sorry. And if you really want to reconcile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it work. It, it depends on, on our intention. Do we really want to reconcile and uh, get rid of these problems and start the strong family again? Or we are just want to fight with each other. Yes. So if we want to reconcile, we have the intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it work. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. The Creator has been more merciful and He sent the blueprint. So now we have it. And you expound on many of these things in your book mm -hmm. for a blissful marriage. Tell us now, people love when we keep it real. And we keep it real, and this is what people can relate to. And you keep it real in your book, and you talk about some of the common phrases that we might right. hear. And I mentioned them, people are excited. Now he, the w wife's yeah. complaining, my husband's yeah. barely home. Yeah. Or she talks too much, or whatever the case. Can you explain why did you put these phrases in your, in your book, we, we, and how we can benefit from as that? As you said, we try to make it real. In all our books, is like in, in the first book, we, we published parenting, and I was meeting the challenge of parenting. And it was, we have what we call case studies where you, you, you give typical problem that happen between the parents and the children or between the spouses. And then you, you ask the reader to try to answer questions related to, to the problem and analyze it. Then we put a whole chapter on the proper answer for this. Problem. And that makes it much easier for the reader to relate to. I'm sure we have like in this book, Blissful Marriage, we have around 13 or 14 real problem uh, as you mentioned, some of them. And I'm sure many of the readers can relate to, and when they read it and they see the analysis and, and the recommendation there, oh yeah, I, I think I'm doing this. I think I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Absolutely, that. yeah. So, so, so they pick up tips and, and, and uh, directions, you know, pointers, so uh, uh, they, 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 they can help their marriage to be successful. If, if I have to end with something, I would say, please keep nurturing the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of mawadda and rahma. Mawadda is much, much more than just love. It is, it is a comprehensive kind of love that brings the best out of the couple. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Maryam verse number 96, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَنُ وُدَّا Those who believe and act righteously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring this mawadda between them. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to, to, to be able to nurture this gift. And we had all, over 30 qualities that we should try to improve in ourselves so we can, can help us to nurture this gift. So our family life will be harmonious, will be peaceful, and will be the best family life we can have. Will be blissful marriage, inshallah. Blissful marriage, get the book, blissful marriage. <laughs> Blissful marriage. Get the book. Don't miss out. Thank you, Sheikh, for being with us. Jazakallah. Thank welcome. you so much. May Allah bless you. I mean, you too. Thank you. And that was Dr. Bashir. And if anybody wants a workshop, family parenting or marriage bliss workshop in your community, look up Dr. Bashir at his website to come out for free and do the, the workshops. And it all starts with wanting, earning to become better because as Muslims, once we have submitted to the Creator, not the creation, we should be in a constant state of self-development each and every day, progressing instead of regressing. So we need the knowledge, we need hit people like his experiences so we can benefit from people of knowledge and we can grow to be the best, the best in life. So inshallah, at the end, God willing, we can get to Jannah. Follow us on the Facebook and Twitter. Keep up with The Dean Show and we'll see you next time. Inshallah, God willing, until then, peace be unto you.